Hi, welcome to Art of Academia, a weekly podcast featuring interviews with leading scientists and insider takes on life in academia, hosted by Komal and Madan, researchers from Cancer Science Institute, Singapore. Let's do some warm-up. Yeah, how was your day? Mm. How was my day? <laughs> what have I done to you? No, 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 I'm just thinking, dude, I've, I've been having such bad memory lately. Okay, I guess day was pretty good. Remember yesterday I was complaining that um, I want to go to jail, right? Mm. It's basically feeling annoyed that there's so many like small, small things you have to do, right? It's like not getting time to sit down and then mm. do the things that you feel are like important because they're also like difficult stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um so got some clarity on that. I feel like I was, I think I was generally just in an annoyed mood. But also what helps is, like today, it felt good because, the like I, I got some time to just sit down and do the one thing. Uh, but also it was nice because it I was using some things that I had learned before, like elsewhere, and I got to apply that. Uh-huh. So it's like kind of solving this problem in a new way, right? So it feels like, oh, I learned something new. Yeah. I think that adds to it. Absolutely. What about you? When you, when you, I don't know, when we were having this discussion about going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. For you, I just felt like you're going to go and like write a book or something. Exactly. Yeah. Like I don't, I want like one thing, just do one thing, mm-hmm. not be bothered by all these like other stuff you have to do, like, yeah. oh, wake up, shower, <laughs> go to lab. Uh, I don't know. Uh, for me, as in, most of the day was the TA stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, I like it. It's it is tiring physically a little bit because of course this was six hours. Yeah. Uh, but it's just nice to see engage with these students. Um, six hours TA is crazy, by the way. What the hell? Uh, it it's not exactly six like, hours. Like there's different stuff that keeps happening. So it starts around twelve. Mm-hmm. The, the professor gives a little lecture, mm. and then then the TAs take over. So they then they will sort of give some theory lectures, uh, describe the experiment concepts mm. this that which is which is the nicer part for me right. at least uh, because you can actually give them some new concepts and teach them something new uh, sometimes they will ask questions you can ask them questions uh, it's quite rewarding that way mm. but today itself I was also feeling that it's I think not as engaging though so it is definitely rewarding something I would enjoy yeah. but it could not be the only thing that I'm doing it's a good thing that I am having this experience yeah, exactly. so I just I mean, know now how it feels like it, right? exactly so it's sort of is paying out already um, yeah, I think the most exciting parts are when the students are keen and mm. they are, you know, coming to you, asking questions, can help them out or just mm. some, just figure things out together. That's super exciting. What else? What have I been up to? Oh, yeah. Mm. This, actually, this might be a good segue. I've been listening to this uh, book by this guy called Rick Rubin. Uh-huh. So the book is called um, The Creative Act, A Way of Being. So Rick Rubin, right? Hmm. What a guy, man. <laughs> really. What's up? I can't believe he's a real guy. Uh, wait, let me find his wiki because I don't want to make up some stories. <laughs> That's not true. How did you find him? Um, I, I don't know how I found him. I think I've just heard about him through some other people that I follow. Yeah. But he's basically this uh, producer. So he makes music. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, in, in the, I think mainly in the USA. Um, but what he's really known for is... Like, he's super big. Like, he's produced a lot of crazy hits. Like, huh. very, very big bands. So, I think in, in music, product producer doesn't mean just that they pay for it. They ha- they're actively involved in what the song sounds like. Like, I think sometimes people also make the sounds themselves. I don't know if he goes that far. But based on what I've read, it clearly sounds like he has a lot of creative decisions to make with the artist. Like, he works with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and this guy, he's paid like crazy Because people trust in him. Like, they're like, okay, you know how this works, right? But then you look into his sort of personal career, and I think there was even a clip where someone's asking him, so what do you do? And basically, he just listens to things, and he's like, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is not good. (laughs) Like, clearly. Like, and then I think some guy even asked him him about, like, uh, like, does he know, like, how these things work? And he's like, no, I have basically zero technical ability. What the fuck? It's just yes or no. You're just like... Exactly. So he just goes by what sounds nice to him. Okay. And then people go to him for that advice. Right. So they're like, yeah. And But the, the, the cool thing about that is like what he has cultivated basically is very good taste. Right. Right. 
like he has a sense for what is good um maybe it's a bit of knowing what will do well out in the mm. wild or something mm. but he doesn't seem like a guy who cares too much about what other people think so at least when i'm like listening to the book right mm. so he's a bit you know, it's very obviously into spirituality he has like some some chapters on things that are very zen very meditation uh-huh. he doesn't talk about it directly i just i'm i just found it very very curious so even the book itself right he's not saying anything solid it's not like practical advice of like do this hmm. um i mean clearly that's why you like it yeah yeah <laughs> and but exactly but it works hmm. it's like he he's saying a lot of things without really saying anything mm-hmm. but in the end of, in the end of it you like still take away something and he he even That's says beautiful. this like just take take the parts that make sense that to you doesn't need to be yeah exactly wait actually there was one one quote from Rick Rubin so you uh, didn't even read the wikipedia or yeah i hope i was trying to find something okay this is someone talking about Rick Rubin's production methods uh huh He says he's fantastic with sound and arrangements and he's tremendous with artists they love him he shows them how to make it better and he gets more honest and exciting performances out of people than anyone he has the ability and the patience to let music be discovered not manufactured um so this this is following up from another guy who was basically saying that when they paid him this insane ridiculous amount of money to produce mm. he was only with them like five hours in a month or something like that's that's all he was there to give input for and then he was like initially mad about it yeah but then there is like oh okay now i see wow i really want to see what he's doing he even looks look at him he looks like that <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh, that actually check wow. out the book i i do recommend it it's mm. pretty it's he has a very nice voice it's nice to listen to all right Yeah, okay. I guess that is as close as a segue as we'll get. <laughs> we can move on to is science art. Yeah. So, I mean, this one I haven't really like fully thought it out. It's just like a few few ideas that I'm like playing around. But Where did this come from? I'm not sure. I think I was just in oh, I think it started out something like um I could use more creativity hmm. in my research. I see. I don't know how I thought of that but I just remember that as a starting point hmm. and I was thinking oh wait yeah why isn't it more creative on a regular basis like why does it not feel creative hmm. most of the cool research mm-hmm. it does come from creativity oh yeah it, ha- it has to be creative it's just that we are maybe we can actively try to engage and bring creative ways yeah i mean of course so my initial intention with that was I want to be more creative right like of course like you hear these stories of where people thought of um like a very novel solution to some problem that was like refusing to be solved yeah. so that I don't deny like of mm. course there's like a um, lot of creativity within yeah. science but I think it's not the day to day aspect of it mm. okay i think maybe this is a good starting point which is actually how how they are different um i think one one sort of reason why it feels different is because i mean science obviously you're trying to seek truth right you're saying you're trying to describe how things really are like that is the bulk of science yeah. maybe there is some yeah. prediction you want to guess how things will be in the future but most of it is like trying to accurately describe how things are yeah very um, objective but art on the other hand doesn't care about truth right it's it mostly seeks to resonate with people um in fact it's more emotion yeah and in fact there is no such thing as true art right like if anything um good art has multiple interpretations and there is no like correct way of looking at it yeah uh, but that's very different from what you would call good science right because good science on the other hand should be clear and everybody should take they away the same message consen- exactly consensus yeah. unanimous um yeah like there. imagine mm-hmm. you read something and then you're like oh i think this means that yeah. and then someone else, that's like that's not good right, right? right. Know, like you, you see it and you just have to see what they're trying to say yeah so i feel like okay maybe maybe that's why because that leaves more wiggle room with art right like mm-hmm. you can do what you want um and i guess you can also stop whenever you decide you're done like that's one aspect right that's like that's true that is true nobody else can come and be like oh i mean they can say that it is it can be finished more or can be yeah but you are like sort of the ultimate you're just authority like, no i think it is finished yeah. and that's the end of it yeah. no journal reviewers can 
<laughs> True. Yeah. And and maybe this is another difference, which I guess this now not really talking about the difference, but things you could take away is like if you start out making some art and let's say it's not going as well as you had as you had hoped, you would still like sort of finish it off and be done with it. You'd be like, okay, this is done. I have made this. It's maybe not the best thing I've made, but it's something I've made. And then you like if you have some place to put it up, you might put it up. You know, like, like it's I think just, that depends on the person. For some people, they might not put it up, as it goes for research. I see. Ah. Where you sort of ended at some point, and then it's just sitting in that hard drive, or you know, mm. um, just just did not I see. go anywhere else. And same can happen for art. I think for for music, for paintings, etc. Depends on the artist. If they okay. are, they they might need it to reach this certain stage. If it does not show what they were thinking, they might not want it to be out. Okay, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I guess I was thinking about it from how I am. So whenever I write, for example, hmm. uh, like of course there are drafts I don't finish. Yeah. Um, but there is never like, but there are many times when uh, the thing I'm writing is not really complete or is not yeah. as good as it could be. Yeah. Uh, but I can just like if I if I decide okay I am happy enough hmm. I can just send it out. Hmm. Like there is no. Same is true for research in that case. Who's gonna accept it? The lowest journal ever. Ah, <laughs> uh, I suppose. But like now we are not in that position. Like at least now. There is like you know men- mentors involved. This Their is names system, will. System, of course, is different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. Maybe if if you're in like very open source fields, you're just doing an independent researcher. Yeah. And you tried something, it didn't work, and you can just send yeah, it. Yeah, but you were excited enough, and you think you have reached a stage where you don't want to continue it further. Mm-hmm. You still can maybe put it out somewhere, and then yeah. move on to the new project. Exactly, and that was something I'm I'm trying to do more. Like if, right now, it doesn't have to be a publication. This is the thing I don't really care about, the paper. But I want it to be like some unit of work that's done, mm. and it can be shown somewhere. Yeah. So basically, like, let's say you just have some negative results that cannot go in a publication, right? So, like, yeah, you tried something. Mm. I'm sure yeah, people then, have I mean, struggled you can't with do this. Anything, yeah. uh, but why? Like, if okay, if it's something you're not gonna publish anyway, like it's not gonna add to something. Why can't I just put it up on my blog, for mm. example? Mm. I would be happy to can have you it not? there. I don't know. Like, I don't know if. Um, Like you'd have to talk to people, like the supervisors, about the data. You know, like even though you used it and it didn't lead to anything, I'd be okay with like sharing all this. Mm. So, but I do wanna mm. bring it up. This is something I'm gonna talk to them with because there's one thing in my mind where it was a cool idea to start with. Uh, we tried and it didn't work. Um, I just don't wanna like abandon it. Like fine, like we don't have to pursue it if it doesn't work. Mm. But at least let's show the work we have done, right? Mm. We thought of this, we yeah. explored it, yeah. you know, we made all these pretty plots. Of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least that it? line of thinking might help to someone. Yeah, exactly. So, I will try to pitch it. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um So, next one is like following rules versus breaking them, right? So again, I think this is re- sort of related to the first one, but in science you're sort of focused on doing things the correct way mm. right like there is a like you get commended if you follow all the rules like you have all the controls yeah. you thought of all the edge cases yeah. um that's when you get praised i feel i'm feeling icky yeah. <laughs> thinking of all this but but it is fair <laughs> enough right enough, that's course, yeah. that's the way you yeah. want to do good science mm. but good art probably doesn't do that right like if you f- maybe follow instructions to the detail it probably doesn't leave an impression on someone I don't know enough about art to know this, but it's true with writing. Right, people who like intentionally break grammar sometimes. Yeah. Uh, they are the ones who who get remembered. Mm. Oh, I never thought of this breaking yeah. grammar. Yeah, yeah, on board. purpose. Like right. people make up words, words that don't exist. <laughs> like just smash random words together mm. or intentionally say something in mm. the wrong way because I guess that like gets your attention too. Right. Yeah. I mean, even for art, that's true. I think I right assume. now, right now, what I'm doing is, as I mentioned, learning techniques, mm-hmm. seeing things. Van Gogh. Okay, let's let's just try and make that. Why is he so cool? Look at what he just created. Mm. Nobody else can had that idea. Just this novelty and creativity of whatever he was doing is insane. Yeah. And even for me, like in future, that's the idea: being able to sort of distance, up, like learn all of this and then distance away from it mm-hmm. and bring your own unique uh, style. Yeah, like that's that's cool. I guess that's a good good strategy. I think this one is not even uh, so focused on science. It's more about. It, this is the career aspect of being an academic mm-hmm. versus a artist mm. um this uh, and this is not my idea this is like some uh, this is a blogger called Paul Graham he's like a computer scientist and uh-huh. and when he talks about art he's actually talking about building good software 
oh. that's art for him. Hmm. So that's the context this is in. Hmm. But he basically says in academia, uh, the best strategy is to pick pick something that no one wants to do, right? Like it's such a icky, awkward, clunky thing that no one is like tempted to take it. Maybe you have some leverage over it for whatever reason, you know, or you're just like hmm. arrogant enough to like deal with all the problems. Mm-hmm. But that is like the ideal place where you want to be because it ensures that. no one else is going to like you know there's no really, competition really some competition yeah right and then you have your time to like work with it and mm. over time you build expertise mm. um and and that's the way you become original mm. like you do some original right, research right, working right. on something no uh-huh. one else is working on uh-huh. um but in uh, art so again with the software context he claims that making something like making good art making something beautiful the best way to do that is to take existing stuff and tweaking it mm. so like combining things um in new ways uh and or like even making small refinements hmm. that's what he thinks of um is like the bulk job of a of an artist hmm this point i mean again it could it is quite subjective right this opinion hmm i'm thinking music i'm thinking art music is in a way that right just just to tweak tweaking the existing stuff i suppose even even art for that matter writing of course you are uh, simulating all the ideas that are there and then just bringing out what you think about it what yeah. you have um digested from it yeah like music if you now that you said that i remember there's this sort of documentary actually it's a pretty cool cool story it's this guy called uh, kirby ferguson he made a documentary once called everything is a remix hmm so why do i think i've heard of have you mentioned this before anyways go on yeah so he he made a short film hmm. and he did it in a few different ways uh but one of it is uh with music hmm. so he shows how you start with like a popular track now and then you find like he he traces its history back so hmm. some parts of it were sampled from a song before hmm. uh that that came from a song before hmm. and he traces them all the way back to like a crazy old amount of time hmm. um and but yeah basically the claim is no one really makes things new like everything right. is a remix right. and he does that with a few different ideas one of it music he does it with tech a few other hmm. things hmm. and the really cool part is he remakes the documentary again like he will <laughs> he will remix the old one and make a new version hmm. like every couple of years it's right, pretty cool right, cool right, stuff right, right. so i was just reminded of that like yeah maybe in that sense art you can do that but yeah like this is where maybe it is in but some even, ways but even in academia it's yeah you're building on what the foundation stuff. and then remixing things this this True. whole paper talked about some idea you're just like you know translating it with your system through Yeah, like this one sort of falls apart when you look into it. Hmm. Like when I read it, it sounded convincing, hmm. but when I thought about it, it was like, ah, eh, not really. Yeah, I mean, in terms of similarity, I feel well, one thing I mentioned was the process. Hmm. I think both scientists and artists are constantly looking for inspiration. Mm-hmm. If be it active or passive, I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I think as as an artist, I also really. different things can stimulate you same mm-hmm. is true for an uh, a scientist who is reading something and they're like oh this connection oh with what i am doing and things like that so that um yeah i i was even thinking about this is a little far fetched now but in terms of similarities of course both of these streams require creativity mm-hmm. and these are also the people who turn out to be like more having all these mental illnesses and things like that oh yeah that's that's true so many movies will yeah. watch Yeah. crazy scientists or like crazy artists true, true, people true. like that so that's the but that, that's the similarity <laughs> if you're a, either an artist or a scientist you might be more prone to mental illness yeah. that's the conclusion <laughs> sounds good yeah and what you the point you mentioned about how it does not feel creative in, on day to day basis mm-hmm. it is this difficult i'm just thinking about for example i'm i'm making a painting mm-hmm. and if i even if i'm making a painting every day the 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 steps involved the process involved feels creative it just feels more fun oh yeah yeah even 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 though it's exactly the same what i did yesterday hmm i think that there was something i wanted to touch upon is because like this kind of art right like when you just sit down to paint and then you finish it in one go um or even like other things like writing a blog where the timelines are shorter, shorter. uh i think that's part of it right hmm. like this iteration hmm. uh and yeah at the, at the end of each iteration you have something yeah Yeah so, even if you're looking at this this one big idea in research 
it's just so far fetched mm. the idea is really cool really creative but maybe it's spread across a span of 4 3 to 4 years yeah and obviously it is difficult to have that excitement every day exactly and this i think like okay now that opens a whole can of worms uh not worms these are things i want to talk about but i think we should save them for another episode which oh. will be um basically wet lab versus dry lab mm. right mm. i feel like dry lab has some of these components where mm. like the timelines are faster yeah you can go through these iterations and the cool thing is also you have like a fair bit of flexibility right like so I, like i was saying earlier you have a thing you want to do hmm. um you can try many different ways like hmm. the sort of barrier to entry to try a new solution is super low absolutely like with wet lab if it's a new protocol yeah maybe some people just have more agency and they can like still set it up and do it still i mean i see people optimizing things like five types of different transfection reagents yeah not fun yeah so this is what i was thinking about right so whenever i talk to dennis uh, this always comes up where when it's when it's bioinformatics stuff i am fairly excited to like try different things mm. um because to me it's like oh that that's just like this much work it's not that much mm. i can do it mm. um whereas he tends to be a bit conservative because mm. i guess he doesn't see it the same way i do hmm. right hmm. uh but with wet lab it's the other way around I right see. to him it's like oh this is so simple huh. just try these three different things he's but a i have wet lab a, scientist by training right yeah he's a wet lab scientist hmm. by training that makes sense yeah but then maybe maybe it isn't different maybe it is just a, a mental block right doing this yeah experience. and and i think mental block is not the right word because it implies that it's just a block get rid of it i i don't think i'm implying that like these blocks are real and yeah, you should I take you. them physically i can <laughs> you should take them seriously <laughs> but it was just curious to think uh from from that perspective of like oh maybe for someone who is very proficient with wet lab this is not uh mm. like a, a difficult thing okay mm. i mean now now we're going more into wet lab as well i think we should <laughs> we just keep really that went into it really as a separate episode because mm. i think there's quite a lot to talk about yeah it is it is difficult to bring in parallels if you just zoom out and just look at the creativity angle yes but apart from that really just as i mentioned on on the notes as well that that whole process it just takes you in the zone just the small smallest things that you're doing the freedom that gives you is something else i cannot compare it with academia yeah actually the flow state thing is a good good point because a few tasks in in research make you feel make me at least feel in flow state i think um the reading can do that like if there's one if there's like some new idea hmm. that i'm chasing yeah. trying to find like the correct information and just making up a story hmm. that can feel like it um mo- definitely more easily with like programming yeah. like there's a problem you're trying to solve yeah. uh and it's also more rewarding because at the end you know like you've solved the problem or mm-hmm. not like it's not like oh i have a cool idea but i'm not sure if it's yeah. real yeah. um it's hmm. that so there are a few things i think very rarely experiments can feel like it also uh but this is i don't think this is coming from the experiment itself i think that's me being in like a good good state then i can in, like sort of induce it myself right mm. so repetitive tasks so it's mm. kind of like doing the dishes almost mm. like sometimes it can feel good right? i like doing dishes every time every time no time <laughs> i told you this right like i am the dishwasher <laughs> <laughs> i i chopping chopping vegetables etc as well i just love it i see yeah. uh, for me not always but if i am being intentional then i can enjoy it mm. so it's true for some experiments hmm. so i guess that, yeah that that might be something some similarities there the flow state hmm. stuff <laughs> a lot of segways it was fun though it was good yeah good luck editing <laughs> yeah <laughs>